What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Truly is a blessing to be here this morning to all those who are on live stream. I'll have a short announcement. The youth ministry will be sponsoring a drive by feeding for the homeless. Less fortune today from one to three. We thank God, all of you who have joined us on live stream during the pandemic. God has truly blessed us. We thank God for making it possible to, to view service on live stream and also to give online. Baptist Temple, we thank you for your faithful giving unto the Lord. We ask that you continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones and those who are sick in the hospital and those who are recovering at home. What a mighty God we serve. We are now going to have a hymn, I Am Thine, O Lord. We are now going to have scripture by Deacon McNeil. After scripture, we'll have prayer by Deacon Barber. And after that, we'll have two praise hymns by the praise team in that order. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Baptist Temple. Praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord, Baptist Temple. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen. When we think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us souls to just scream out hallelujah amen hallelujah. Yeah, amen I'm just thanking god for another day that we're here to be able at the temple amen just one more time i'm going to read to you hearing this morning luke 22 verses 39 through 46 again that's luke 22 verses 39 through 46 and i'll be reading now the, the new king james version Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not fall into temptation. And as he was withdrawn from them about a, throne, a stone's throw, he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven strengthen him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, 
Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. I have read to you the Lord's word. May we be edified through it. May God be glorified through it. Amen. 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 Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Precious eternal Father, we just thank you for one more day, Father God. We thank you, Father God, as you allowed us to see this day, Father God. First, Father God, I just want to say bless our pastor, Father God. Strengthen him, Father God, and give him the strength to go through, Father God. And then, Father God, bring him back with a testimony of how good and how great you are, Father God. But in the meantime, Father God, we're going to praise you this morning. We're going to love you this morning, Father God. We ask you to be with the preacher this morning, Father God. Lift him up, Father God, on every leaning side, Father God. Give him the strength, Father God, to yield to you, Father God. Let him know, Father God, that you hide him, Father God, and that you can fire him, Father God. But in the meantime, Father God, we're going to praise you. We're going to love you this morning, Father God. We ask you to bless the first lady of this church, Father God, strengthen her, Father God. Then, Father God, we ask you to bless us all, Father God, as we come to hear your word this morning and lift you up just a little bit higher this morning, Father God. Because, Father God, we know, Father God, we have to, Father God, because you're the only one that, one that we can turn to, Father God. We praise you this morning. We love you, Father God. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, let's sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, let's go. Every praise is to our God. One accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, every praise. It's to our God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. To our God. Come on, let's sing it together. Hallelujah. To our God. Glory, glory. To our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. He's my Savior. He's my healer. My deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, our Savior. God, our healer. God, our deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise.
us to our God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide blessing to be before you this morning. We're praying for our pastor in his absence. What a wonderful, mighty man of God he is. To my pastor, senior pastor, Reverend Cornell N. Williams of the Baptist Temple Church. And yes, I know his middle name. That's a relationship I have with my pastor to Sister Williams. <laughs> Get all teared up when I call that woman name. What a mighty guy. We serve a mighty team. Pastor Williams and Sister Williams. To Deacon Barber, chairman of the Deacon Ministry, to all the deacons and deaconess of Baptist Temple Church. To Baptist Temple. Hootie who? 
Oh, yeah, that's our love call, y'all. That's our love call. A family that prays together stays together. And to my wife, Rochelle, whom I love. We're going on 16 years this year, y'all. I love that woman, y'all. I love that woman. There is a word from the Lord. And I'm going to ask if you would please turn with me to the gospel according to Luke. The 22nd chapter, verse 39 to 46. Uh, you have heard that read earlier. I'll be reading it again. I am coming out of the Life Application Bible. So you'll hear words similar to these. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives. And as he was custom, and his disciple also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, 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 not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthened him, and began in agony. He prayed more earnestly. Then he, his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down. When he arose up, he prayed, and he had come to the disciple, and he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest, you're in, lest you enter into temptation. Verse 8. And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them, draw near to Jesus and kissed him. That's in our reading. Entitling this sermon, whether you're standing or you're at home, look at whoever's beside you and ask them the question, why are you still in your mess? Why are you still in your mess? Let us pray. Father God, we come to you first, thanking you, Lord, asking that you forgive us for our sins we have committed. Father, we ask you right now, let them hear your words. Remove me, Lord, and allow the Holy Spirit to use me. It's not me, Lord, I want them to hear. I want them to hear your words. Use me, Lord. I need you, Lord, and right now, we ask that you continue to bless us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Why are you still in your mess? Yes, we're, if you look at it, if you look at it, you look at what's going on in the world. We, we are in a pandemic. Folks have to keep distant from one another. It got to a point where now there's a new strain of virus that is showing up around. Now, instead of wearing one mask, you gotta wear two masks. It's hard to wear one mask. Yet now we got to double that thing up. You know, Folks are hungry. They can't even feed their family. They started to give a stimulus check for 2000 They gave 600 Now they're waiting for 14 Who, What you going to do with 2000 Oh, that's too much. You got to rob Peter to pay Paul. Peter's still waiting for the rest of his money. 
anxiety. Anxiety has taken over. Folks are now don't know what they're doing. They're having problems at home, families. Children are not in school, so they, they're home all the time. None where to go, nothing to do. We used to want to keep them off the computers. Now we want them on the computers. Yes, when you think about it, it's a mess. It's a big mess. But I didn't ask you about the world mess. I asked you about your mess. I'm asking those who says, I will follow the Lord until I die. I'm asking those who were redeemed, those who've been born again. I'm asking those who would say, what would Jesus do? I want to know, why are you still in your mess? Yeah, 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 because he gave you the answer to the test a long time ago. What, you're not studying to show thyself a friend? You got the answer. Write it down. Put it on your hand. There's the answer. He said, they will persecute you because of me. And that covers all that's going on out there today. And yet still, you're in a mess. I know, I know, you're in the baby syndrome. Y'all know what the baby syndrome is. Good, I ain't got to explain that. The baby syndrome. Oh, you want to know what the baby syndrome is? You know, when the baby cries, it's even an inkling that he's wet, he's going to soil himself. And some of us look at it, and we didn't assess the situation. So we give the baby a pacifier or a bottle because maybe that's what they want. But reality is they soil themselves. So you go on after they stop crying. You allow them to keep going and they keep going. You know how your sin is? You get a, you get a quick inkling that that's not the right thing to do. But yet you just don't pay it no mind because you didn't assess the situation. So the baby's sitting there in the soil having a good old time laughing and giggling because he done passed the point that he was in the soil. He got used to the soil because you ain't changed him. Now he's sitting there walking around. And sometimes if you watch a baby, you can see his pamper sagging. He got a saggy pamper. Maybe that's why guys now wear their pants down because it was a saggy when there was a baby. And he's walking around with a saggy diaper. Now here's the key. Because you didn't assess the situation, that baby mess start to stink. Now you wondering where the stink coming from. That's that adultery. Where the stink coming from. That's that lying. Where the stink coming from. That's that cheating. Where the stink coming from. It's coming from you because you didn't assess the situation in the beginning. And on the baby, you say, oh, what's that smell? Who's that? And you pick the baby up and say, oh, that's you. So now you decide to clean the baby. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Some of y'all need some Jesus blood soap. Maybe it's style Jesus blood soap. Caress Jesus. Some of you need to watch because you stink. And I'm not just talking to the world. I'm talking to born again Christians. Because we were given the answer to the test. We're moping around. Yes, there's going to be time to mope and weep. Jesus wept. When Lazarus died, he wept. Yes, there's going to be time when you're going to get upset. He went to the temple and whipped the change makers. Yes, he did. Yes, there's going to be some times when you're going to be sorrow. Every last one of us lost a loved one. Yes, you care so much about what's going on. But you're the one the world is looking at. You're the one who's going to have to strengthen them. 
You're the one that we need hope for. If we're running with them, how are we going to help? Talking about your mess. Our mess. How long are you going to stay in there? It's in the text. <laughs> it's, it's in the text. I want to bring you forward to where we at. Before this, Jesus told Peter that he was going to deny him. And if you read the text, you'll understand Jesus didn't say to Peter, you're going to deny. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan, the dire shift you like wheat. He told him, Satan is coming after you, boy. Paraphrasing. Yo, 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 homeboy. Let me tell you something. Satan coming after you. So you better gear up. They got into the Garden of Gethsemane. It's ironic because the first Garden of Eden, man disobeyed God. Now we're in the Garden where man is obeying God. How ironic he goes to a Garden to do so. The text says, coming out, he went to Mount Al, and as he was accustomed, and his disciple also followed him. Custom that is very important because man didn't take Jesus, Jesus gave himself to man. Listen, 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 listen. He knew that if he keep going to the same place, Judas was going to tell them where he at. Jesus could have changed that up. Now nah, we ain't going to the garden, we ain't going to the garden. Let's go on out to the court because at the garden, they're gonna come get me. No, that's not what he. That's what he did. He accustomed went to the garden because he knew Judas was coming. But he wasn't worrying about Judas. Because the text says, when he came to the place, he said to the disciple, pray that you may not enter in temptation. Three things. Three things I want you to get out of here. Prayer, temptation, and nevertheless. Prayer, temptation, and nevertheless. Because the devil will tempt you. I know he did. He did Jesus. Paraphrasing, yo, 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 Jesus. Yo, yo, Jesus. Come with me. See all this? You see all that? Uh-huh. I'm going to get at to you. All you got to do is follow me. Deception. Jesus is like, yo, yo, homie. How you gonna give me something that's wrong to my Lord? Perception. $74 billion, the lottery is. $74 billion. You can't win unless you pay. Let me, let me see what I got. Let me see what I got. Yeah, I can pay rent another day. Let me see what I got. They ain't got to eat today, now. Nah. Let me see. I ain't got no gas money. I need to win this. I need to win this. Perception. They got you thinking you're going to be a billionaire. I'm going to get my mom a house. I'm going to get my kids. Um, I'm put some money in the bank. I'm going to help the homeless. You know, I got to take care of the homeless. Everybody got to take care of the homeless. I'm going to take care of the homeless. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get my church some money because they need to have some money too. They need money. You done planned something you ain't got. You done planned something don't belong to you. Temptation. 1 Peter 5, 6. And even humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He said to the disciples, pray. There's got to be a dialogue before you and God on a daily basis. Listen, you can't make it out here unless there's prayer on an every day. No, 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 no. You can't pray on Monday, skip Tuesday, go on Wednesday. You can't pray in the morning, skip the afternoon, and pray at night. You can't pray at 8 o'clock, skip 9 o'clock, and pray at 10. 
You got to have a dialogue with the Lord every minute of the day. I promise you, once you have a communication with the Lord, the answer to the test will lighten your problems every day. He told the disciples, pray lest you get tempted. Luke didn't add that what Ma Matthew and Mark said. Matthew and Mark said that when Jesus left the first time, the disciples went straight to sleep. Y'all know how it is late at night. You done tired, you work a hard day. You know, it's, it's okay, you work hard today. You put in a whole six hours, maybe eight hours. Okay, okay, you put a whole eight hours in. You've been working hard, you get home, you gotta straighten up a little thing. Nobody wanna cook, nobody wanna cook. Nobody's cooked, nobody's cleaned the house. Pick up that shirt. You keep, I don't know, let me see, I'm gonna throw it in the trash. You got all this going on. Yeah, I'll throw a lot of stuff in the trash. Then I say, it's in the trash over there. And yet still, when it's time to pray, all that he put you through that day, all that you did, you only got about two seconds. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you did. Help me to make. That's why you in your mess. What? Satan got a general standing right beside you to make sure you stay in your mess. Now, he not going to mess with those who love the mess. You know, there's some people who love to stink. They just stink for no reason at all. I stink. Don't bother me. I don't shoo. Eye for eye. Don't do me wrong. I ain't always been a Christian. There's some folks who just love to stay that way. But Jesus said to the disciples, he said, pray that you may not enter in temptation. Now, I can imagine the, the disciples saying, hold up, Jesus, we just here. How, what kind of temptation we going to go when we here? We ain't going out there. We right here. What we going to do, Jesus? Scripture says we sin in word, deed, and thought. So let's get this clear. We all sin. Let's get that clear. Let's also get this clear. We all got some type of mess. Let's get that clear. But you don't have to succumb to the mess. You know how to turn the other cheek when they cuss at you. You ain't got to cuss back. Because they're going to think I'm a punk. Well, punk it up. Because somebody else is watching you. Somebody else need a lesson. Somebody else need to learn how to do what you just did. They may be at home. He yelling and screaming at you. You ain't got to scream back. I can, I can remember me and my brother was going through something. Um of a girl and he told me she was doing something I said no she ain't don't tell me and he kept going at it and I, I jumped in his face and I said listen you say something else man we going at it and he stepped back I like my brother and he walked away <laughs> I respect that man for the rest of my life because he could have went back at me Sometimes you got to stand down and watch the salvation of the Lord. He said to the tempter, he said to the, the disciples, pray that you may not enter in temptation. Here, Jesus was at the point of his life that he was about to get. And if anything he needed was, he needed some prayer warriors. Have you ever called somebody to help you pray? 
Have you ever called somebody that you know going to get a word in? Listen, you may can get a word in, but you know they're going to get a word in for you too. You know God has listened to both of y'all. And as much as I can say, and many people that pray at one time, you know God's going to make a change. And then you step aside. And he withdraw from them about a stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if this is your will, take this cup from me. I, wanna, I want you to get this. Because he is 100% God. And he's 100% man. A hundred percent God and a hundred percent man asking the Lord to take this cup. This cup he was talking about was about you and I. This cup he was talking about was that person who talk about you every day and you can't stand them. This cup he's talking about when. When you and your children are not at, at, at bay. This cup he was talking about is you doing so bad and so wrong. He seen what the world had in mind. He seen what he had to take upon himself. But it wasn't only the cup he was worrying about. He was worrying about that he was going to have to be separated from his God. would have to be separated. The board is set of the world. You ever lost somebody dearly to you? We know how that feels. When they leave you, this was very hard for him, but very easy for him. Oxymore. <laughs> it was hard and easy. It was easy for him as God, but it was hard for him as man to separate himself for our mess. But then he said, nevertheless, we have to live some nevertheless life as born again Christians. Yes, they're going to talk about you. So deep that they're going to talk about you right in front of your face. You have somebody talking and they just talking right in front of your face. You're going to do that in front of me? You ain't going to turn around nothing like that. Just, some, just right in front of me. That's when you have to show who you are. That's your Nevertheless. Yes, you've been so kind. You've been given to the weak. You've been given to the hunger. You've been paying your tithes. You've been praying to the Lord. And yet still, they're going to talk about you. Now, now, Lord, can I get them? Nevertheless, you have to put up with the mess on a daily basis. Putting up with it and being in it, two different things. You got the mess, and you're putting up with the mess. Or you got the mess, and you decide to sit in the mess. I ain't gonna worry about. If they smell me, they won't get close to me. I can be by myself. Just know one thing about that mess. It don't just involve you. It can involve your whole family. What you think ain't going to do, it's going to involve everyone. Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Just know that when you hit a nevertheless moment, God will send some angel to comfort you. You don't have, you never had that happen? You never had a comfort peace? You sit there, you cried all night long. By the way, there's nothing wrong with crying. Crying is good for you. You ever had a good cry? 
And after you got finished crying, you laid down and with the you had all that spit on your pillow, everything. You know, oh man, this this some good stuff. Know that when you cry, and after you cry. You'll wipe away all the tears, all the sorrow, all the dismay, all the sin, all the trouble, all the everything that he did to you. So go ahead and cry. An angel came. The text says that the angel appeared from heaven, strengthened him. And he began in anger and prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like drops of blood falling down onto the ground. When he arose up from the prayer, he had come to the disciple and found them sleeping from sorrow. Now, I don't know who is it now, but somebody asleep. Everybody saying, I can't wait until he's done. I'm tired. He still found them asleep. Now, the other gospel said Jesus came back to them three times, and all three times he came back to the disciples. They were sleeping all three times. That says something. That really says something. That says, if truthfully, we're sleeping too much. In the text, if Jesus came three times to the disciples who was with him when he was here, how many times are you sleeping and he's not here? That says a lot. The disciples were tired and sleeping for what? Jesus was the one going to the cross. He was trying to prepare them to let them know that he's about to go. Listen, when you look at the text, you find out that he was about to die. Here is their, their Messiah who was going to bring them out. Now, he told them he was going to die. And I don't know how many times Jesus said, I will take care of you. You know how many times we say, he said, he never leave us nor forsake us. You know how many times he said, God will supply all your needs. You know how many times we said that? And yet when we go in trouble, we talking about, oh, Lord, I don't got nothing. I need something, Lord, please. You know how many times we said, Lord, are you here? You said you never leave us. We'll take his words. But will you put his words to your faith? But he wanted the disciples to understand that he's about to go. And he wants them to understand that because he already know that as soon as he get arrested, as soon as they take him, they're going to be like, oh, let's get out of here, y'all. Come on. Mm -mm, they got Jesus. They got Jesus. They got Jesus. Let's go. They got Jesus. They gave up. He wants you to pray on a continued basis. Your mess don't have to be something that you're struggling with. You got to pray through that mess. It's got to be a prayer on a daily basis. The text says that he came and said, why do you sleep, rise, and praise lest you go into temptation? Wait a minute. He said earlier, pray that you may not enter in temptation. But then he says, pray lest you enter into temptation. He tell them, don't go in it. Now he's telling me, telling them to enter. Temptation isn't a sin. Did y'all think that was? You know what's a sin? When you do. Yield not to temptation, for yielding to it is sin. The devil tempt Jesus at the mountain. Are you saying Jesus sinned? He didn't yield to it. He turned his head and said, now, nah, man, I can't listen to that. You know that extra money the bank gave you? You know it ain't yours? God done blessed me. He put some extra money in my account. I don't know how he did it, but Jesus knew I needed it. He knew I needed it. You 
Oh, somebody told a lie. And the first thing you was, ooh. They said. And it's always they. Where's they at? Come here, they. They come in the door. You know how it is when you come home and nobody cleaned up and you work all day. I'm the only one bringing money in the house. Y'all can't at least clean for me. That's how you're supposed to say. When your spouse spend up all the money, and you're like, why are you spending all this money? <laughs> Sometimes you got to talk for more calmly. Nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but yours. The text says that he said, enter to temptation. And while he was still speaking, behold, the multitude came. The multitude came, and at that moment, at that time, Jesus knew it was time. Now, the story went on to, they was quarreling about taking Jesus. Judas kissed Jesus on his, on his lip, and the guards took it, and Peter was upset, and he took a knife, and he cut the ears off of one of the guards. You know, listen. Jesus was trying to get them to pray so the temptation doesn't take over. The reason why you stay in the mess is because you're not praying. Yes, they short you on your check. Yes, you lost your job. Yes, you don't have any money for food. You don't look like you don't have any money for food. Maybe you need to go on a little diet. I'm not going to ask nobody because I don't want them thinking I need. Well, excuse me, are you hungry? Yes, you go and do tribulation. Yes, you lost somebody. But you got to pray. Prayers change things. Text says, the text says that when Judas betrayed him by a kiss, then he arose him. And when they cut the guy ear off, Jesus, paraphrase, hold, hold, hold up, hold me. I know you're my boys and all. I know you got my back, you got my back. But this must be done. Scripture said he picked up the ears and put it back on his ear, on his face, and went on to what he's supposed to do. Sometimes, more, more than less, we got to pick up some ears that can cut off. We have to go to the ones that have ought against us and we have ought against them and communicate to them. Listen, I, you can't make them, but you can do your job. Believe it or not, many times while we don't reconcile is because we think that the other person will not take it. The reason why we don't reconcile is because we believe they're not going to be the one to receive it. But the problem is, you're the one who don't want to give it. But I got good news for you. Some four and two generations ago, Christ died on the cross for you and I. The scripture says that they nailed him to a cross on a place called Golgotha. He died on it, but before he died, he said, Father, forgive them. The scripture said that they put him in a borrowed tomb. They didn't just put him in his tomb. They got a borrowed tomb for him. The scripture said he stayed there all night Friday, all night Saturday. But on Sunday morning, you know, you know, you know, you know the preachers, the old preachers, there go. But early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. You have the power. You have the power. You have the power. You have the power. So I want to know. I want to know. I, this is a question. Why are you still in your mess? You got the answer to the test. And I don't know if you ever took a test and they said it's an open book test. Oh, I love them open book tests, man. I love them open book tests. 
I love, I love, I love Pastor said he loved the uh, 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 test that you can get all the answers and all that kind of jazz. I love that time test too because I just started <laughs> dropping whatever one it ain't. A, B, or C. But if you got the test, if you got the answer, why are you still mad? Why are you still in your mess? Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve that we can pray because prayer saves us things. What a mighty God we serve that we can nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but your will. It's not easy. Y'all know it's not easy. When you're dealing with people, it is just not easy. But he did it. And we talk so much about we want to be like Christ. What would Jesus do? Well, you know what he did. So now we're going to talk to those who don't know him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and risen again, you shall be saved. If he or she should call on the Lord, just call him. You ain't got to go get things per, per, prepared. You ain't got to go get things set before that. Let me, let me go back. Let me go get something to check out. No. Call him now. Had he not shown himself, we would have never known. Doors of the church is open. Those who can call the number in the Facebook Live comment, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you can also say that you want to know him more about Jesus in the comment, and someone will reach out to you. We know you can't be here now, but if you want to know more about him, you can just leave a comment and they will. Listen, you don't have to stay in your mess. Yeah, yeah, we all got mess. But God wants you to move and be productive and tell him about his name in your mess. If he can make a donkey speak. <laughs> Doors of the church is open. Let us pray. Lord, you have shown up and shown them. Your word, your word is so awesome. We needed a lesson and we needed some teaching. And we know, Lord, those who have heard your word, Lord, we ask that you take it and humble it through their hearts. Not man, but you, Lord. The Bible says all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Use us, Lord. Take us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stay with our pastor and his wife. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with a seated joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, now and forevermore, let the church sing amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.